Uh, I think I came about because of my training in the Grenadier Guards and I'm deciding at a certain point in time, 1976, that it's time I got fit again from the time I was in. And then I, the jogging boom came and I decided that people ought to follow me because there were no smiles in the, in the, in the town at all. People were sitting on buzzies with miserable faces and I thought, well, I have got to do something about this nation that is lethargic and losing it and everything else. So I started creating runs in parks and that evolved into complete army training, which was okay. Well, every year I create a new obstacle. I was told five years ago, six years ago by my advisor, stop building damn obstacles, stop. And, but the challenge came up 15 years ago, 10 years, 20 years ago. What are you going to do to us next year? And I say, I'm going to stop you in your tracks. I'm going to do something you were so frightened of, you won't come again. And they come back and they say, ha ha, we beat you. And I say, all right, where do you come next year? <laughs> so my experience um, in building obstacles safely, although you don't think it's safe, I know it's safe, is my experience and my love of the army training that I received, which was the best the best. The Grenadier Guards are the first of foot. So they're first of the of the Guards regiments, number one. They're first of the foot regiments, number one. Guards paras are first into battle before the actual paras, but I'm told now that they've been disbanded, sadly. So that proud badge, number one. That is what we all want to be. They'll learn from tough guys. That's where we've got it. The camaraderie, it came from your first, uh, your first power drop. So you've done all your training and you're all set to go on a mission, which is a dangerous mission into Aden. We went into Aden, we went into Cyprus at the crisis time of uh, 1956. And so it all selected first of foot, and the night before, you all take a drink, and you all lock arms, because in the morning, somebody is gonna get the Roman candle. In those days, there was always one. You're gonna come straight down and you get hit. So as the drink, helps and takes you, it builds the courage inside yourself, but the bond between you is unbelievable. You're never going to leave a man behind, the American seals say it, they're never going to leave a man behind. We never left a man behind, you know, we're all for one, one for all. That spirit, that marvellous, absolute, wonderful camaraderie, it's a an iffy word, because it was used by communism, but it is, means what it is. We were one. That magic came to the London Marathon, the very first London Marathon. It was a low budget, and we finished up the mall to the right-hand side of Buckingham Palace, and we were all collapsed, we were new to marathon running, our legs had gone, we were cringing, leaning on each other in marquees, and there wasn't enough hot tea or hot chocolate to pass around. So we stood in the line and we took a sip and we passed it on. And I recognised there and then was a camaraderie on runners. So when I built Tough Guy, I said I will build that magic formula. And here at Tough Guy, we've got the magic formula. Nobody can pinch it, nobody can steal it. They can copy everything we do, but they can't create that wonderful feeling that is felt by people who come to Tough Guy. Out there, it's in the ground. It's in this valley. It's 
a long story about how things evolve. It's to do with religion, it's to do with Jesus Christ, it's to do with Mohammed, Krishna, or anybody's personal liking to a philosopher of the past that we follow. I've managed to get it all here together in my little bundle. It spreads on tough guy day and everybody gets a taste of it. And I lock it all up in this magic box. I put it in that lake and it stays there till next tough guy. Nobody can steal that. Nobody can find it. It's a magic. A complete and utter magic. People who take time, well, at one time we had a complete tough guy. And we could, in those days, really put them to the tests of how strong they were in the arm, in the fingers, or whatever. Um, but today, because tough guys spread, and because we get 70% new people every year, so only one third or less people come back year on year. And then over the years, we realise that the word has spread and then we're getting in people now who are less able. We won't say they're less tough, but they're less able, ability, but they come here to learn ability. They come here to to find out how they can manage tough guy. So we get lots of young students. How young can I come? Can I come on 14? I want to do tough guy. No, you can't. We can do an event for you, especially, but we can't put you into the actual tough guy. There are dangers. People rise to that occasion. They realise they haven't completed tough guy. They piddle up our fence like an old dog to mark their spot and they come back next year to have another go, to beat the challenge they didn't manage in their first attempt. And we welcome you. Right, Dental Warrior is coming up very shortly and the end of July. Always the last Sunday in July, always the last Sunday in January. Um, but Nettle Warrior this year will be tougher and more interesting, more exciting because instead of doing two laps around the one lake, which is always confusing, and the first 10, 20 guys always complain because somebody from 150th place down the line takes a wrong turn and gets into the, you know, so it's, it's, we don't like nags, we don't like upsetting people, we don't like taking away the factors, <coughs> they, you know, somebody got in there and alters the, the sequence of finishing. So we've built two new magnificent obstacles. So we built another lake, to do your nose log push round and the standard lake will carry the the uh, rafts, the dragon rafts. So you'll experience that which is called Gallipoli. So we built a brand new trench warfare. So we built a two kilometer trench. So you're enjoying, well, <laughs> you won't enjoy it, but <coughs> you will see what it was like to live in trenches in those wars. And it's built in a wonderful setting in wood and you're going to experience exploding mines blown up in your face, shit in your face. You're going to experience uh, electric wires which you've tasted everywhere else but you're going to, they're going to hit you in a, in, a, in a different sort of way. You're going to experience snake bites, you're going to experience rats nibbling at your feet, black holes, sniper turrets, sniper climbs. So this is all brand new, the Nettle Warrior, the big one. Well, it can be a serious um, shock to certain people. 
So if you've got a heart monitor or anything like that, then it could make you tick, a, tick backwards or things like that. Uh, don't forget that farmers use it every day to keep the cows in a field and they simply put the nose on it and it bounces them back. But we give you just a small taste of it. We have got a competition running that we might sneak into Nettle Warrior for those that are really brave. And it's called the Electric Wire Bite. I'll show you a photograph of several people who took up the challenge of the. So you grab the electric wire solidly, and that then earths it. So you stop feeling the tingle. If you're brave enough to grab it twice, but then you bite through the electric wire. And we'll show you pictures of people who take the challenge up and he throws them back a few feet. So maybe, maybe you will come across that new challenge on the electric wires. Will anybody else brave enough to put people through that? But generally, it's just a great thing. It's probably cheaper than Viagra. And we've had pass, people pass through our electric wires and their wives send them back and say, can you put them through it again? <laughs> Especially when it's mixed with water, which we do in the, in the torture chamber and the Viagra, and that's where the Viagra was named because you're sliding down a watery, slippy slide and you're getting electrocuted at the same time. And we have got reports back that it's much better than Viagra, it lasts much longer. And their wives say, can we replicate it at home? I said, no problem. Of course you can. We'll just give you the formula. Other obstacle races are a long way behind. You know, Tough Guy was created 25 years ago, and when I created it, and each obstacle I created, I thought everybody else is 20 years behind. 20 years behind ever catching up with this. But now they start to catch up. Um, there's an awful lot they need to learn about health and safety, because Tough Guy is completely safe. If you're gonna injure yourself on Tough Guy, you're going to be a determined suicide person because we've got so many safety factors in place that you can't see. So, other obstacle races, for your sake, for the competitor's sake, need to knock on my door and say, please, tell us how we can make these obstacle races safe for competitors. It is a very, very important factor. You need to go to an event and know that you're going to be able to go to work next day. That your wife and children, or your support, or your rent, or your car tax is going to be paid. Not lying in some hospital, injured, without insurance, because that is what's happening. So, other obstacle races are still many, many years behind Tough Guy. And you as a competitor need to listen to me and make sure that something like this comes into place for your safety. Hello John. <laughs> I'm just not a pioneer. I am the creator of everything. Everything anybody in obstacle races do, they're copying from Tough Guy in our past 25 years. Most of them are doing what we're doing in 1989. 1990, and they call that an obstacle race. We left that far, far behind. So, me, um, they ask me, I'm a sadist? I say, no, <laughs> I'm a provider. A provider of fear. And fear is the most magical thing. Anybody who's experienced fear realize that it's the greatest thing to join us all together. Because in fear, 
we cling together, we bring about the camaraderie, and in tough guy, you have got everything, everything there is. So tough guy is your. I do it every morning. Every morning I take the course to make sure that it's safe and my problems come with the fact that I've got several dogs with me, sometimes 12, sometimes 20, and when I dive in the lake to swim the lake, whether no matter what the weather is, the dogs dive in after me. Now I'm there on my own early morning, at dawn, in the lake, and I've got 20 dogs biting me. I don't know whether they're trying to save me or whether they're trying to sink me. It is a frightening experience. But as you get older, and I've been climbing with some very, very famous men, and there are some famous jockeys, there are some famous people in in real adventure sports. And we all pass through a phase when the fear gets us. I've got to get over this, I've got to come out, you know. So, doing the course on the morning, testing it and seeing that it's working, it is what everybody should do in their backyard. As you get older, you need to do your morning exercises and there's no greater morning exercise than doing a bit of tough guy. Climbing, pulling your arms, bending, twisting, turning. It's excellent. So, sure, everything you try a tough guy, we have tested it, or I have tested it out. And the most fearsome of all, which we don't put in tough guy, we put it in special events, is the ice cap. There we put a blue plastic on top of the water. 15 metres, not far to swim, 15 metres underwater. But the first time we did it, I went in to try it first. And as I dived in, all I hit was plastic. Deeper I went, hit plastic. Deeper I went, plastic. All of a sudden, you realise what fear is. Because there's no air. You push up with the plastic. There's no air at all. And behind me was William, my son. So I suddenly thought, God, he's going to get trapped. I can't find him because they, it's pitch black. So I turned back to find him, to stop him. And he'd already died. He was in me. And hard thumps. Have I sent my son to his death? I pulled up, looked, ready to face the worst disaster, and there isn't any worse disaster in the world than losing somebody really close to you. And his head emerged the other side. Luckily, he dived deep. I dived shallow. And we don't put that event in, because it is highly dangerous. But when the challenge comes, we'll put it there. That's my standing. So you've got fears to come will make you piddle your pants. Well, I signed on for 22 years, and so many with the colours, and then so many with the reserves. Um, and I almost did the full term, and then a toss of a coin in a bar on an occasion, and I came out into civilian life with all the feelings of, of the wonders. I wanted to go back and do my time and get my gun and do some killing because they were taught to be a killer. Um, but then I got captured by the needs out here. Inside the guards, you are, have a wonderful life. Everything is provided for you, uh, travel, enjoyment, thrills, fearsome challenges, the ability to get on the front line to defend your country, defend your queen, 
and also your food and your meals provided for you and a bed and money in your pocket. You can't get anything better. But out here there were lots of kids who just didn't make the grade. And I got a great feeling about kids. You know, I grew up tough, really tough. And I got out of the gutter and ever since then I put my hand back in the gutter and lifted them out quite often. And I'm trying to recruit a whole team now of people to listen to me. And together, if we gather to get people listen to me and join me, we can build ladders into the gutters of life. Bring out the kids, they got talents, they got strength, they got a tough guy, they got everything we need to make us world leaders. But they're in the gutter. Their talents are being wasted. We need to lift them out there. That is me. That is tough guy. Serious injuries are a broad spectrum. Death is not the most serious injury because death is final. The most serious injury is a broken neck or a spine, paraplegic or completely and utterly disabled. That is the most serious injury. And that is my star. That is the one that I live for. I live to avoid that one serious injury. But I also live for the fact that it can happen. And my greatest wish of Tough Guy and all these other obstacle races that are coming up is that we prepare to look after that one person when it happens. And it can happen by falling over a chair, tripping over a rubber ball, or falling from a great height. That one serious accident hasn't happened at Tivka. It's nearly happened a few times. It's nearly happened. A broken leg won't kill you. A broken arm won't kill you. All it means you've got to sit in a bit of agony while you're waiting to be taken to hospital. I prefer me work with you. So we ensure, whether it's summer or winter, that we have enough medical staff to cope with how many hypothermias we're going to get. And in that way, you get the protection of Tufka around you. Because if we were greedy and took 10,000 and we hadn't doubled our medical staff and our Gregorian guards who were looking after you and everything else, we would be seriously wrong in taking you on board and not having the preparation. So we can estimate by the amount of water and the amount of deprivation, the amount of cold we put you in, how many we're going to get in hypothermia. Because hypothermia is the most serious under the broken neck and everything else. So you've got three levels. The shaking, shivering level, that's okay. The level you reach when you are delirious, don't know where you are, you won't have help, you stop shivering, you go to comatose, that's a serious level. The next level is death. Because the blood is solidifying, it's not getting to your brain, and you're going to die. Very, very serious things to think about. Come with a friend. Come with someone who's done it before. Or just come with a friend. And stay together. Cling together. Because you're going to need each other. And then you can do it. Then you can achieve it. Then you can say, I got there. Whether you complete it, matters little. You got there. You can always come back next year and do the bit you missed. So, come with a friend. Or a group. Or a party. But... Make sure you've got some support.